I'm going to do an exercise which follows the test-driven methodology. I hope you guys know what test-driven methodology is. The idea is you write your tests first and then you write your code after the fact. So you write your test case before you write the actual code under test. And the test case is going to fail. And then you write your code so that the test turns green. Okay, so that's test-driven methodology. You basically write test first and then the code. So I'm going to be practicing. I'm going to show you how that works with a simple method called compute circle area, right? So this is going to be a method that takes in a radius, an integer radius, and it is going to return the area of the circle with that radius, all right? So let me write the test first. Before I do that, let me call this test add uh, the method of the method that we're very verifying that the add should be test add, right? Give it a nice name so that you know what method it's uh, it's verifying. You don't have to do this. It worked like you saw, but then this is another one of those practices to make uh, the future, uh, you know, person who's going to be working on this thing their life easier. So I'm going to follow test driven methodology to implement the circle method. So first thing I need is a signature, right? A method signature is required because otherwise you get compilation errors and you don't want that. So this is the method that I want to write. Public, uh, let's say double, compute circle radius, sorry, circle area, and then uh, I'm going to take in a radius and then this should return. This is current. Let's make it return zero at this time. Okay. So this is what you typically do when you write a uh, test driven development. You stub a method because you need something for your test to call. And then you're going to pass in the actual use cases and you're going to see the red bar. So let me do that. I'm going to create a JUnit test case for that thing. I'm going to again do add test annotation. Wide test circle radius. And what this is going to do is it's again going to initialize math utils. Might be wondering, hey, why are we doing this twice? Well, I get back to that. There are better ways to do it. But then now, what I'm going to do is um, let's say I want to calculate the circle area for um, the radius 10. Okay. So I'm going to do assert equals. I know that the area of the circle for radius 10 is this guy here, which I just conveniently copy pasted. But this is what I expect when I call mathutils.computecircleArea with the value of 10. So which is what I'm going to do, mathutils.computecircleArea with 10. And then the third argument I'm going to pass in is the, uh, the message when this test fails. Should return right circle area. OK. I'm passing in the expected value. I'm passing in the actual value, which is the result of the execution. And I'm passing in a message which says, should it in the right value after calling it. Now, what happens if I run this? This is obviously going to fail. I'm going to go here and then run this again. Now, you notice it has two tests, right? Now, of course, the first test is failing because I didn't put back back the value here. I'm going to put that back. And now that first test is going to pass and the second test is going to fail. Right? It says expected this but was zero. You can double click on it and then you can get the value as well. Now here's what I can do. I can now implement the code to get this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say return 3.14 times radius times radius, which is pi r square. Now let's say I do this. I say, okay, I'm happy I've run this method. Uh, I'm going to run it. Well, it fails again. Well, guess what? 
it's close, but not exact. So I'm going to go back here and say, okay, now we need the exact value. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a math dot i and then save. Let's see if this works now. Run. And now this works. And this says this is executed successfully. No message if, uh, if, if everything passes, right? You don't get a message when things pass. So what we've done here is done test-driven development with JUnit. So this is technically how you do it. You basically stub a method. Of course, we have a very simple use case here, but then this could be more complicated. The idea is you stub a method and then you write your test case. The, the final state of the test case, you're not stubbing the test case, right? You write the final state, make sure you, you're happy with the test case, run it, make it fail. And now you're iteratively gonna be working on your actual code and the test. And how do you know that you've completed it? Well, your test cases have to pass. So this kind of goes in with the whole agile methodology of writing user stories, right? When you write a user story, you say, okay, this is my expected behavior. So you write your test cases for that expected behavior and then make sure all of them fail because you have stubbed your method and then you write your code to make all of them pass.